This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the world that the Lord has made. Let us receive it with thanks and respect it with care. Let us pray. Lord God, you lovingly spoke all creation into existence and shaped each one of us within our mother's womb. As we gather to worship you today, Fill our hearts with wonder and our mouths with praise at the wonderful world that you have made. In the name of Jesus, by whom and for whom all things were created. Amen. Welcome to our church here in Erdington, part of the great city of Birmingham. We're very fortunate to be worshipping God in what is not only a beautiful church, but also a multi-purpose building which, during normal times, every day of the week, houses all ages and all activities. We look forward to the time when normal service can be safely resumed. In the meantime, we thank God for all those who have given of themselves to heal and to help and to encourage us through these very difficult days. And we pray for those who battle with illness, both physical and mental. In our worship today, we are thinking about the other most pressing issue that faces every one of us, 
and that is climate change. There is a book with the title, There Is No Planet B. And that's right, isn't it? We have been gifted just this one planet and the clock is ticking. As Christians, we believe in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Whatever we may make of the creation story as told in the book of Genesis, there is the underlying truth that God entrusted the world that he had created to Adam and Eve, and in time, to you and me. We are to take care of it. We are to be caretakers. Well, sadly, Adam and Eve got it wrong, and sadly so too have successive generations. So much so that we have reached crisis point. Fred Pratt Green faces the issue head on in the first hymn that we're going to sing, led by Philippa and Ethan. Why not join in with us? God, in his love for us, lent us this planet. Let us continue our worship with our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. My heart is filled with adoration when I lift my eyes to you. For you are Lord of all creation. You make all things new. My soul is filled with lasting peace when I close my eyes to sleep. For you are Lord. You're right beside me. I'm safe within your keep. My mind is filled with inspiration when I open my eyes anew. For you are hope and love outspoken. Your words are full of truth. My life is full of aspiration when I see through eyes that weep. For you are Lord of the grand and broken. May I be your hands and feet. Amen. God of all blessings, source of life, giver of all grace. We thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nurtures life, for the love of family and friends, without which there would be no life. 
We thank you for the mystery of creation, for the beauty that the eye can see, for the joy that the ear may hear, for the unknown that we cannot behold, filling the universe with wonder, for the expanse of space that draws us beyond the definitions of ourselves. We thank you for setting us in communities, for families who nurture or becoming, for friends who love us by choice, for companions at work who share our burdens and daily tasks, for nurses and doctors who work tirelessly to secure our health, for teachers and support staff that educate and care for our children even when their own lives are at risk, for strangers who become, who welcome us into their midst, for people from other lands who call us to grow in understanding, for children who lighten our moments with delight, for the unborn who offer us hope for the future. We thank you for this day, for life, and one more day to love, for opportunity, and one more day to work for justice and peace, for neighbors, and one more person to love, and by whom to be loved, for your grace and one more experience of your presence, for your promise to be with us, to be our God, to be our salvation. For these and all blessings, we give you thanks, eternal and loving God. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The reading this morning is Psalm 24, the great king. The world and all that is in it belong to the Lord. The earth and all who live on it are his. He built it on the deep waters beneath the earth and laid its foundations in the ocean depths. Who has the right to go up the Lord's hill? Who may enter his holy temple? Those who are pure in act and in thought, who do not worship idols or make false promises. The Lord will bless them and save them. God will declare them innocent. Such are the people who come to God, who come into the presence of the God of Jacob. Fling wide the gates. Open the ancient doors, and the great king will come in. Who is this great king? He is the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, victorious in battle. Fling wide the gates, open the ancient doors, and the great king will come in. Who is this great king? The triumphant Lord, he is the great king. Thanks be to God.
Touch the earth lightly, use the earth gently, nourish the life of the world in our care. Gift of great wonders to surrender, trust for the children tomorrow will bear. We who The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So says our psalmist, which Marion read for us earlier. As Christians, we are called to be good stewards of the earth that the Lord has given us. But as David said in his introduction, we haven't always done a particularly good job of it. You only have to look at some of the photos in the montage shown earlier to know that often money is far more important than doing the right thing for the earth. As a consequence, we have allowed things to go from bad to worse. Some of it has been unintentional. Sometimes we've tried to do the right thing and ended up making things worse. There was a big push a number of years ago about using biofuels as an alternative to burning fossil fuels. But of course, Big money became involved, and then it got complicated. Palm oil is a perfect example where it appeared we were trying to do the right thing, but it all went wrong. Palm oil is literally everywhere, in our foods, cosmetics, cleaning products, and it is also used in biofuels. It's a source of huge profits for multinational corporations while at the same time destroying the livelihoods of smallholders, displacement of indigenous peoples, deforestation and loss of biodiversity, and they're all consequences of our palm oil consumption. World leaders are trying to do something about climate change, but often their attempts are too slow and are thwarted by changes in government, changes in leadership and attitudes, which cause them to drop in and out of these agreements, which are meant to start addressing the problems. So no doubt our governments should be doing more. OK, I know they are all a little bit distracted at the moment, but that doesn't let them, let them off the hook completely. Having said that, we aren't blameless either. We all need to make changes to the way that we live and move away from just consuming stuff, just for the sake of it. Many will say, the problem is too big, and therefore I'm going to do nothing. But this isn't something we can ignore. We can already see that our weather patterns are changing, and we are learning more and more that just ignoring it is not an option. So what can we do? If it's such a big problem, what can we do that will make a difference? Well, 
this year, I think we've been shown quite clearly that small actions can have a big consequence. We have a perfect example in Captain Tom. All he decided to do was to walk the width of his garden and keep going until he was 100 years old and raise money for the NHS. But his actions galvanised action in many, many people. He made a really big change by doing a small thing. We can all do small things and they can potentially all make a big difference, particularly if we all get involved. I'm not saying the small things are easy. It seems to me that the more we do, the deeper we get in the hole we've already dug. And it's not always obvious what the best thing to do is. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. I'm talking as much to myself here as I am to you. I'm afraid I find it really difficult to not use plastic bags. It's because I'm a bit lazy, really, and I'm not organised enough to make sure that I have a bag with me, and I just end up using another plastic bag. During lockdown in particular, I've been having deliveries rather than shopping myself, and they all come in plastic bags too. It's not easy, and it does take effort and thought. I think personally that I need a picture of Kitchener on my, the exit to my house that says, your earth needs you. Many of us have been following Anne Churcher on Facebook. For February, Anne has taken up the challenge of collecting rubbish from the roads around her area every day. Anne is a real inspiration, and we can see the difference she's making because she posts before and after photos. So well done, Anne, for doing a little thing that makes a big difference in your locality. I have had a go at this myself when I was working for Seven Trent as part of their corporate responsibility. It's fun in a crowd, and it's amazing how much rubbish you collect. Maybe leave the crowd bit for a little, though. Maybe we should be looking around us to see what small things we can do to make a difference to our communities, to our churches, and to our friends and neighbours. Just a small thing. It doesn't have to be a grand gesture. It's a little bit like speaking up and saying a word of encouragement it can make a big difference, just a small thing that can have a big impact. I have leased cars for quite a few years, and at the end of the lease term, when you have to hand the car back, someone comes and inspects it. They expect it to be in reasonable condition for its age, and you do get charged if you've done damage to the car above and beyond this if we were leasing the earth, I dread to think what the charges would be for the damage that we've done. The earth is indeed the Lord's, and as such we should be taking much better care of it. We can do this by doing small things that collectively can make a big difference. Recycling, lobbying companies to use less plastic, looking after our own patch, aiming to make our churches more green. So finally, I ask you to make a pledge. The earth is the Lord's. So what small thing are you going to do to make it so that we can hand it back at the end of our ten tenure in good condition? And so we come to our prayers of intercession. The bidding is, Lord, in your mercy, and the response, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for our world, planet Earth, for this wondrous creation which you have gifted to all humankind and which is ours to enjoy. Forgive us, we pray, that only too often we forget that it is also ours to treasure and ours to care for. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those people across the changing world having to face drought and flood and storm and fire, that God may grant them strength and hope for the future as they work to adapt to the changing climate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world in which we live, that God may open our eyes to recognise the goodness of all creation and help us to do what we can to restore and care for the wonderful gift that we have been given. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders, that God may grant them wisdom to make just decisions which respect the earth and all who live in it, especially those who are the poorest and most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, that through God's grace we may be good neighbours to each other and to the whole of creation, restoring and caring for all that God has made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the family of this church and for all families gathered here in prayer. We pray especially for those who are ill in body, mind or spirit. We pray for all those who mourn, those who are separated from loved ones. We pray for those who are lonely, lost and anxious. May we know Christ's presence with us and that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sent by the Lord am I, my hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes sent by the lord am i my hands are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes the angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love of justice and of peace the task is mine to do to set it really free oh help me to obey help me to do your will sent by the lord am i my hands are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes sent by the lord am i my hands are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes the angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love of justice and of peace the task is mine to do to set it really free oh help me to obey help me to do your will the angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love of justice and of peace the task is mine to do to set it really free oh help me to obey help me to do your will The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and with all those whom we love, near or afar off, this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>